The next presentation is titled Balanced Crystalloids versus Saline for Intravenous Fluid Therapy Results of Two Pragmatic Trials, presented by Wesley Self from Vanderbilt. Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here. Being the fifth speaker comes with certain advantages. I might be able to use the clicker. And secondly, we see a couple of themes developing here with emergency research being conducted with cluster randomization and with waiver of informed consent or through EFIC. And this will be along the same themes, and I think we can look at the similarities between a number of these trials at the end of the session. So getting back to the clicker. I was wrong. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. This study was funded by the Vanderbilt CTSA through NIH. There are no other relevant disclosures. Isotonic crystalloids, commonly referred to as IV fluids, are some of the most common therapies used in hospitals throughout the world. Just in the United States, there's over 200 million liters of isotonic crystalloids or fluids given in our hospitals. And there's very significant practice variation in the type of crystalloid used, namely normal saline versus some of these other fluids termed balanced crystalloids. And we'll go over that in detail. We believe that the composition of the crystalloid may actually lead to important outcome differences between patients. So here are the common crystalloids used for resuscitation in our emergency departments and throughout our healthcare system. What you have in the first column is the composition of human plasma which you see on your Kim 7 report, and then normal saline, also called saline or 0.9% sodium chloride. And I've highlighted here the supraphysiologic content of chloride in normal saline, which we think may be driving important clinical differences when this fluid is used, particularly in high volumes. And then in the blue, we have our balanced crystalloids. Commonly in the United States, this is given as either lactated ringers or plasmolite A. They're called balanced because the composition is more similar to human plasma, particularly in terms of sodium and chloride, as you see here. So like all drugs, there are potential concerns with fluids and adverse outcomes in patients. In particular, normal saline is known to cause a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, and there are good animal data showing that there's decreased renal blood flow when animals are resuscitated with saline. Similarly, balanced solutions are not without their potential problems. They can cause an alkalosis, and they have hypoosmolality, which can be dangerous for certain patients, such as those with brain injury. What was not known before these trials is whether these physiologic differences led to important clinical outcome differences, and that's what we studied in two trials. So our study question is this. Does treatment with balanced crystalloids result in better patient outcomes than normal saline? And we actually did two concurrent trials at my home institution at Vanderbilt. The first one called SALTED, or SALT-ED, looked at early fluid treatment in the emergency department among patients who were not critically ill, defined in this study as those going to a hospital floor. In a second trial run concurrently, we looked at the same question in ICU patients admitted to ICUs in our institution. Methods were very similar for both trials, and thus we present them together. So these were balanced crystalloids, and the clinician could choose the balanced crystalloid of either lactated ringers or plasmolite A versus saline as the comparator, so normal saline or 0.9% sodium chloride. These were single center, pragmatic, multiple crossover trials. Again, the SALTED trial was ED patients that received at least 500 mLs of fluid in the emergency department and then hospitalized outside of an ICU. The SMART ICU trial looked at ICU patients. These were defined as critically ill. So here's a typical flow of patients through a hospital, including ours. So emergency department patients, when hospitalized, either go to a floor here at the top or um, an ICU. So patients who went from our emergency department received fluids in the ED and then went to a floor were analyzed as part of the SALT ED trial with about 13,000 patients involved and then patients in the ICU coming really from any setting, including the emergency department, were analyzed as the SMART ICU trial with 15,000 patients, so combined approximately 28,000 patients studied. Fluid choice, so balanced crystalloids versus saline, was controlled in these settings. So patients in the ED, operating rooms, and ICUs had fluid composition controlled by the protocol. 
And we controlled or allocated our intervention by a multiple crossover design outlined here in the emergency department. So in the ED, we started the trial in January 2016, and we crossed over between fluid types each calendar month, such that in January 2016, we started with balanced crystalloids. So the routine fluid given in our emergency department in that month was balanced crystalloids, and by and large, clinicians chose LR or lactated ringers. And then each month we crossed over, such that in February, normal saline was the fluid of choice, and so on and so forth. We did that in multiple locations across the medical center, such that each unit had their own cluster randomized schedule. In terms of outcomes, the primary outcome for our SMART ICU study was what was called major adverse kidney events in 30 days, also known as MAKE30. This was a main secondary outcome in the SALT trial, the emergency department trial. So MAKE30 is a composite of death, new renal replacement therapy, or what we call persistent renal dysfunction, defined as a creatinine twice at hospital discharge from what it was at baseline. A second outcome that was actually the primary in the SALT emergency department trial was hospital free days, which is a composite of length of stay and death, calculated as 28 days minus hospital length of stay with death coded as zero to penalize death as the worst possible length of stay. Here are the results. So fluids delivered. This is the emergency department trial. So non-critically ill patients in the ED who end up on the floor. What you see in the histograms are the fluid volumes administered a median of about a liter in both the saline group and the balanced crystalloid group with common fluid orders for 500, 1,000, and 2,000 milliliters, as you would expect. Um, protocol compliance was excellent, with 88% of patients in both groups receiving only on-protocol fluids, meaning during saline months, 88% of patients receive saline and no balanced crystalloids, and similar for the balanced crystalloid months. As noted previously, lactated ringers was the balanced fluid of choice in the emergency department. Here are similar data for the ICU trial, where you note ICU clinicians tended to use plasma light a bit more than the emergency physicians. What you see in the figures is the fluid volumes administered over time. On the left is the balanced crystalloid group, and the vast majority of fluid delivered um, was balanced crystalloid. And in the saline group on the right, the vast majority of fluid was saline. So very high protocol compliance. Here are chloride concentrations in each trial. So what you note in the SALT ED trial is that patients came in with the same chloride level at 103 to the emergency department. Chloride in the blood separated in these patients with saline um, resulting in higher chloride levels that persisted for up to three days afterwards. Similarly in the ICU, chloride levels started at different levels when you define ICU admission as time zero, because remember operating room and ED were on protocol, so they had already separated in terms of chloride level, and higher chloride in the saline group persisted out to seven days. <clears throat> Here's the hospital free day outcome to the emergency department patients. Hospital free days was not different between the two groups, so both balanced crystalloids and saline resulted in 25 hospital free days. Here are the primary results I'd like to highlight, which is MAKE30. So remember, this is the major adverse kidney events within 30 days. So this is a composite, as you see in the stack bar chart there, of persistent renal dysfunction, so doubling of creatinine by the time of hospital discharge, new dialysis or renal replacement therapy, or death. And what we see is um, the difference in MAKE30 in both trials, both favoring balanced crystalloids. In the ED trial, we see that 4.7% of patients hit the MAKE30 outcome with balanced crystalloids compared to 5.6% of those with, that received saline. In the ICU SMART trial, similarly, there was approximately a 1% absolute difference between groups favoring balanced crystalloids with the incidence of MAKE30 at 14.3 in the balanced group and 15.4 in the saline group. Strengths of the study, early fluids such as those in the emergency department were captured in this trial, which are largely absent in other studies of this type. There was excellent adherence to the protocol. The trial was actually incorporated in a pragmatic way into clinical care, which should help with um, generalizability. There was a large sample size, which enabled us to detect a small, but I believe very important difference in MAKE30 between groups. Limitations include single center, unblinded design, 
Only hospital outcomes were analyzed, and we did not attempt to tailor fluid therapy to a chloride level or some other patient characteristic. In conclusion, balanced crystalloids for IV fluid therapy in both the emergency department and ICUs resulted in better patient outcomes than normal saline, namely lower incidence of the combined outcome of death, new renal replacement therapy, and persistent renal dysfunction. These results support the use of balanced crystalloids as first-line routine therapy in our practice. Of note, uh, these two trials were published in the New England Journal of Medicine as companion articles a few weeks ago with the references here. And with that, I'd be happy to take questions. Ron Perello, University of South Carolina, School of Medicine, Greenville. Thank you for your presentation, and we actually reviewed your articles uh, for the, in our journal club. Our question that was raised is, other than bed location, the location of the patient, what other injury severity or illness severity measures were included or considered? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I think it boils down to were the baseline characteristics of the two groups balanced? And, and this was a trial where we relied on electronic medical record data. Um, so we have, we have ICD-10 codes and we have a, a number of demographic characteristics. And you probably saw in table one of the papers, we report things like baseline renal function, baseline age, um, but we don't specifically have um, a severity index. Um, for the ED patients, uh, namely because one doesn't really exist for the broad population of all emergency department um, patients that would be relevant. For the ICU patients, we do have Apache score, which is very um, well balanced between groups. So in general, we found that this, this design of the cluster multiple crossover balanced baseline characteristics, at least the measured characteristics, very well. Thank you very much. Congratulations on two incredible studies. Thank you.